We meet here today to honor and pay tribute to the life of that eight-week win streak of the Saints. To express our love and admiration for such a bright, shining star. And to express our hope for the future. Welcome back to the second draft. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Funeral dirges should be in the background. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Like an old school New Orleans funeral dirge. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is yeah. dramatic. This is a wig? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I feel Gregorian good. Only the, it's music. the third one I've been to this year. Damn. Oh, that's sad. Damn. Yeah. Dark notes to start on, but how about that bright note? Camara is still a rock star, despite <laughs> that loss. Yeah. And we saw beer. Beer. Beer's we do. Delicious. Yeah. Cheers. A lot of shit happened last week. Uh, oh. Eli Manning, we we knew you all too well, but oh so briefly. Uh, the Not Chiefs, really briefly. The Chiefs, we, we knew you. I don't feel like we really knew you, but it was still kind of brief. Like so, five weeks. Yeah, fond farewell to you. Um, yeah. Yeah. Damn. I think that's it. Let's just move on to this week. It's too f***ing too depressing. Yeah. It's we'll two get weeks into... for me already. Yes. I know. I'm, I'm at nailed. zero. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we'll get into more mm -hmm. of the depressing stuff as yeah. we go through. As soon as we hit the, as soon as we hit the Cardinals game. <laughs> oh, I think we'll get there before that. Maybe. That one, yeah. So first matchup Thursday night, um, Redskins are playing in Dallas at Jerry World against the Cowboys. I'll go first because it's very clear at this point that Dallas just clearly does not have it anymore. Um, it's kind of amazing, and I still hold true to the idea that all the drama that Jerry Jones is creating for that team is playing havoc in that locker room. But again, it's really amazing how much of a presence Zeke Elliott was on that team. And him being gone just really kind of tore that team asunder. Uh, that Prescott is more or less pleading with the fan base to still believe in him. <laughs> um, the offense is non-existent. The defense is terrible. That offensive line, even with Tyron Smith back in last week, still wasn't able to, to really pull it through. Uh, Redskins are just a better team this week. They're coming off a win last week. Um, I think it's open and close case. Yeah, I'm also going Redskins. The Chargers shredded the crap out of the Cowboys. Yeah. Um, and Cousins is the only, really the only bright spot on that Redskins team. But he's bright enough. Jameson Crowder is That's trending true. up. Trending up. Your stock is going up. Mm-hmm. Mr. Crowder. Yeah. I'm going Redskins. I'm also going Redskins. Um, I don't know how you, I can't say his name probably. Samjay Perrine. He I think he stepped in nicely. P Ryan. P Ryan? Thank mm -hmm. you. Okay. Yeah. Uh yeah, I think he stepped in nicely and I don't see any reason they don't take this one home. The the Cowboys just you said it already. Let's move on. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, next up <clears throat> Oh, Alex Smith. Um, the Chiefs <laughs> The Chiefs are playing the Jets. Ugh. I avoided that beep just now. Yeah, good job. Uh, I'll go first again. Andy Reid is like that weird uncle that creepy at a family creepy dinner told a joke that landed and everybody laughed. <laughs> Ever since then, he's kept trying to tell that joke over and over again, and that joke is having somebody other than Alex Smith throw passes, and every time it ends up being interception. What are you doing? Andy Reid, stop being cute. You've got a dynamite offense. Why are you messing around with that? Just do what works. Stick to a decent script and stop screwing with stuff. It doesn't make any sense and it's not working. Also, you're effing up my fantasy late year. Yeah, me too. Stop it. I just traded for Travis Kelsey thinking I was going <laughs> to clean house. And Travis Kelsey, he may as well have just dropped a goose egg because that entire offense, I think they got 60 yards total in the first quarter of last week. Bad. That's awful. Yeah. Terrible. Uh, I gotta go Jets. McCown looks good. Uh, that offense is looking really good. Bleal Powell might have a really good week against that Jets defense, or I'm sorry, that Chiefs defense. It just does not look like they want to be there at all. Uh, I think it's even the Jets, and it's not even going to be an upset. Page. Yeah. I'm going Jets. Um, the Chiefs have fizzled yeah. like faster than a f fire that you pour water on. It's yeah. weird. Um, that offense is like it's bad. They can't make um, and they lost to the Giants a few weeks ago, and the Jets are better than the Giants. So I'm going Jets. Yeah. Uh, I will admit to being a bit torn on this one uh, because whenever I've 
thought the Jets are going to pull it out and kind of have a resolute victory. They just fell and they just didn't perform. I think it, when did they they played uh, the Buccaneers, I think it was. And I was like, Jets for sure will win this game. Uh, yeah, I would think it was at Oso watching that game early on. In the yeah, season. yeah, I remember that game. Yeah, I was, I was, I was pretty surprised. That being said, the Jets were able to put up big points against the Panthers, which I think is is, is speaks enough for that offense. And yeah. you know, considering how terribly flat the Chiefs have been, yeah, I'll go Jets with you guys. Cool, good man. Yeah. All right, next up, um, the Detroit Lions are playing in Baltimore against the Ravens. I'm going to take the Ravens. Why not? Yep, I, Ravens. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not entirely cemented into that pick. I mean, it's it's obviously in the video now. There's no going back cemented. and editing. I could go back and ADR myself and say Lions. It is but... decided. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's. I think it's going to be the Ravens. I think that defense is a little bit too much for Matthew Stafford and what's going on with uh, with Detroit right now. They're struggling. I, I don't want to say the Ravens are trending upwards, but T-Sizzle. I think T-Sizzle is going to have himself a day. That alone makes me want to pick the Ravens. So, Paige? Um, I'm going Lions. Um, yeah, the Ravens offense is playing v poorly, <laughs> um, and their but their defense is really good, like really really good. Um, the Lions offense is playing well, and they almost defeated the Vikings on Thanksgiving Day. And the Vikings have a great defense. Um, Flacco is fading, and they don't have any run game, and that's bad. Yeah. Um, so I'm going Lions. They got cool. Danny Woodhead back though. Let's just throw that out there. I don't know how much Woodhead will do. I yeah. still he's, the Ravens. Still... The Ravens are less of a question mark now. I always that's my my kind of de- definition for them for the season. <laughs> the end of this, the back half, they've been much less of a question like mark. On a scale I had of one to ten question mark. Ten being the biggest question mark, and one being the smallest question mark. Number I'm one pretty... being like, hey, how's it going? And number 10 being the Riddler from Batman. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, well, I'm not, I'm pretty unforgiving when it comes to question marks. So I, I hesitate to put them above the, the, you know, 500 mark. But that might be where they're at. They're probably at like a six right now, I would say. Fair enough, yeah. And the Lions just, they have also been a question mark. Yeah, maybe more like, for sure. Uh, four or five to me, so. I'm gone Ravens for sure. Yeah. Alrighty. Moving on. That's the first pick where we're not unanimous. I feel like it's going to be the first of many this week. Uh, yeah, I think. Well, we'll see. Next up, um, the Colts are playing against Jacksonville. This will not be one of those games we disagree This will on. not be one of those games. I still, I don't know what Alex has picked. I know what DT has picked. <laughs> I know. But I think Jacksonville. Alex is going to pick. Yeah. Okay. There it is. You want to go ahead, and, go ahead and continue on with your thoughts on that, Alex? If there's I mean, really any thoughts to throw out there for this game, it's just yeah. No. No. I mean, yeah. <laughs> despite <laughs> what happened, no, what happened with despite what happened with the Jaguars, they're still the far, far better team. Yeah. I think the defense is going to have a field day. Yeah. That's uh, it. I am completely inclined to agree. I feel like Calais Campbell is going to have another monster game. Maybe even another touchdown. That's my hot take of the week. I would love that. Place Campbell gets another touchdown. But yeah. Texans are done. It's Jags. Enjoy Jacksonville. Yep. Um, Cold Stevens has been a little bit better. Um, but that's not saying much. Um, and the Jags already shut out the Colts this year. I don't think it's going to be a shutout, but I am going Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. T.Y. Hilton will be on my bench. That's all I'm saying. He should be, he should be, and he should have been last week. I, I, that was kind of like a last minute decision to put him in, and it didn't pan out for me, which is yeah, don't listen. Unfortunate, but well, I think we all kind of collectively yeah, decided because we, we weren't, none of us had were matched up, and it kind of collectively decided that might have been a better pick than putting in one of my other players. But right, you know, whatever. <sighs> well, he's boomer bust. He's boomer bust. That's really sure. what it is. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, we can skip over this one really fast. I feel like. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, I don't actually. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, the Texans are playing in Tennessee against the Titans. 
I know they're in the same division and they only play each other twice, but it feels like the Texans and the Titans play each other like nine times every season. <laughs> those yeah. games, instead of taking three and a half or four hours to play, take like in the scope of like in a parallel universe, they take like three weeks. They're just they're painful. Such a slog. Um, I that's like the picture next to the the like that's yeah that's the picture next to the definition of the word slog in the dictionary. I'm officially not on the Titans bandwagon anymore. I was early on in this, probably the, the first third of this season. Hopeful I was, thinking. Yeah, I was, well, I mean, everything looked like it was going to be trending in their favor. Mariota looked like he was going to, I'm sorry, Mot- Mariota looked <laughs> like he was going to be good this season. I was really high on Derrick Henry. They still can't figure out that run game. You've got two dynamite running backs. Why can't you figure out how to use them both like yeah. the says? Like, why have you not figured that out yet? And I think it's just a limited capacity for coaching. I think they're just not going to go anywhere. That said, they're not quite the dumpster fire the Texans have become since Watson's gone, so I'm just going to go tag their Titans. Alex? Uh, I'm... I was going to I thought if you were, we were going to sc- kind of scoot by this one, I was going to say maybe we should discuss a little bit, because I think this is one where it's not, it's not a great game. They're both kind of bad, but... I, I agree with DT on this one. I'm going to also go Titans. Yeah, as well you should. <laughs> yeah, I'm, go- I'm going Titans too. The Texans are coming off a short week, um, and they're playing their second consecutive road game. Um, if they'd had Deshaun, it would be a different story, and those wouldn't factor in as much. Or if they'd Fuller even. Yeah. Um, but I think given all the, all the the by the powers of all the things combined, um... <laughs> I think Mariota does enough. I'm sorry, who? Mariota. Mariota. Ta. Mar- yeah, okay, I wasn't sure who you were, refer- you were referring sorry, to. Sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. Insert Ta. Harry Potter okay. reference here. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, Titans, it's unanimous. Okay, yeah. Next up, um, the Buccaneers are playing in Green Bay against the Packers. You know what? Hunley is not as bad as I thought he was. What have I been saying to you? Uh, okay, I know. Alex, all of you can attest. I schooled yeah, him no. on when when Aaron Rodgers went down. You yelled at me and told me that Hundley was a great college quarterback. And yes, I said that and wasn't his... necessarily going to translate. Right. And so far, I've been. I proven said, give wrong. him some time. Devontae Adams we... has somehow, some way, found his way back onto my fantasy team because Hundley's been decent. He's been yeah, good. He's You're the great, one. You're he's... the one that swooped him because I tried to pick him up on waivers and he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't on waivers. Yeah. Like, like, I didn't have to claim him. I just literally picked him up. Like, he it was, was a free was agent. Well, yeah. that's, that's a uh, you know what I meant. He was he was in the pool, and I tried to right. I tried to grab him, and yeah. Anyway, yeah, uh, I I remember you. I remember hearing about that. I remember agreeing with you when I said he yeah, came out totally. pretty Dang. strong. But I also flip flopped again when I saw him just tank. So I don't. I mean, he's back and forth right now yeah. to me. And I don't, I don't want to say that consistently he's going to be a rock star, but um, he's definitely at least showing that he's got some of the chops necessary to compete in the league right now. Yeah. Um, I've, I haven't liked the Buccaneers at all this season. I still don't like them, so I'm going to go pack. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I'm going to go pack as well. Uh, there's no reason not to at this point. Uh, Hundley's been great. Devontae Adams has been great. Even though the run game has been absolutely decimated, Jamal Williams has been a shining star. Like, he's been incredible. Also sitting on my bench this week, which I was <laughs> very, very much regretting because with some other players that I've left on my bench, I, I left a good 40 additional points just sitting there, and I could have won this week. Anyway, Jamal Williams is, is really, like, pulled out and, and done amazing things with the run game. Hunley has really come through and become, like, a solid quarterback for that team. Uh, well, meanwhile, the Buccaneers are just continuously tr- like they're drowning, like they're just trending downward every week. Mm-hmm. So it pack. Yeah, and I, so I'm also going um, Packers. Jameis might be back this week. Um, <laughs> I don't think that's enough. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Um, guys. I just want to see he's his pregame speech. That's all I care about for Jameis Winston at this point. I just want to see what weird shit he's going to say <clears> next. <laughs> well, if W like, tastes I, like hands, what 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 do L's taste like? Dick, I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> you have how many like how many inappropriate words have you said so they, far they, today? They can say dick on network television. That's not a beep anymore. Oh, they can all say right. dick. But no, I I would I, I have a feeling that. 
I have the scenario now in my head that I'm just gonna unleash on you guys where Jameis Winston drops his pants and says, This is a W or this is an L. Who wants to, <laughs> who wants to suck an L tonight? <laughs> Oh man! We should move on. Yeah, we're, yeah. the Buccaneers are gonna Buccaneers are gonna lose. I think the Buccaneers are gonna suck an L. Yeah, yeah. it's also kind of L shaped. Oh my God, we're moving on. <laughs> <laughs> this All is right. gonna be our highest highest rated video yet. I guarantee it. Most I'm shared go on video. YouTube, and I'm gonna I'm gonna tag the video as penis. I'm just <laughs> saying, if, if 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 your appendage, if your dude is shaped like an L, you need to go see a doctor. Well, not a so. proper L, <laughs> but like a like a like an L, like because the thing in the yeah. I mean, guys, we've guys, we've all guys. seen. Them. I'm really, I'm, really hoping <laughs> I'm a married out. woman. I know what they look block. like. This block oh dear. Up. <laughs> All right, moving on. All right. <clears throat> so this is this is my game of the week. I'm super excited to watch this game. Mm -hmm. um, the Vikings are playing um, against DQ's Falcons and the Mercedes-Benz Stadium where Chick-fil-A will not be open. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. Uh, Paige, it's your game of the week. Yeah. You kick us off. Um, so I think this is going to be fun. Mm -hmm. Um that Vikings defense against the Falcons offense. I mean, there's no way that that's not just exhilarating. Um, the um, the Vikings have Xavier Rhodes, who's freaking elite. If he is not he is, in the Pro Bowl, then there's is, no justice. He is elite. There is no argument. Yeah. Um, and he's even better than he was in 2015. Yeah. Which... At, at that time, he held Julio to five catches, 56 yards, and zero touchdowns. Mm -hmm. Super excited. Um, this is going to be largely decided, I think, by the Vikings' offense, offense performance. Um, the offensive line is really good. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be a close game, but I, I'm going to Vikings. Yeah, I'm going to go Vikings as well. Uh, I think this game has the potential to be explosive. Yeah. I think it could be an absolute joy to watch because you're going to see two complete teams scoring off against each other. And that's something we really haven't seen much of this week. I think maybe we saw it a couple times last week. Um, it's Saints been kind of Rams a rarity and, this season, though, yeah, just really in has. general. The programming in general, like Alex has is, is, you know, spoken quite a bit about the programming this year and how there's been kind of a disparity between good teams and bad teams. and. I don't want to say the good teams are in the positions they're in because they've been playing such bad teams. It's not quite as bad as you know that might you know that might add up to be. But uh, yeah, I feel like we're coming down to the wire where we're actually going to see really good teams playing against really good teams, and finally, this all this waiting we've been doing this season is going to pay off. So again, I'm going to go Vikings mostly for the reasons that Paige listed. Uh, that Vikings defense is solid. That Vikings run game is great. Case Keenum is coming to his own. I love Case. I think the New York Giants might. Want to make a play for Mohamed Sanu as their quarterback? <laughs> because that bomb out pass to Julio last week for the Falcons was incredible. That was an unbelievable play. Um, Andy Reid should be taking notes because that's how you do trick plays. None of that stupid shit with your tight end throwing interceptions. And do it sparingly. Don't do that all the time. Like, I feel like every single game we've got some stupid Chiefs trick play. They're that, only that, trick plays if you don't use them all the time. Well, your only trick play is having somebody <laughs> besides it, like Alex Smith throw a touchdown because it worked that one time with Don Terry Poe, and that was it. So now it's like it's in their wheelhouse. But uh, it's going to be the Falcon, uh, the, the Vikings. I must say the Falcons. The Falcons. Yeah, it's going to be the it's going to be the he's, Vikings. He's he's Switzerland and he's going neutral territory. <laughs> no, if, you, if you have a if you have a trick play, it's your trick play. It's like the thing that you do. Like ran like the Broncos for the longest time, their thing was it wasn't really a trick play, but they ran the naked boot, and mm -hmm. that was like the huge thing in Denver. And I remember like getting all excited when even when like Jake Plummer would like turn the corner, and I'd be like, "It's a touchdown!" Yeah, and he, yeah. nobody's around him. Um, that's what you got. Your trick plays—they're meant to be tricks. You throw them out randomly, but what's safer and more reasonable in the NFL? is to find a play like that that's a little bit odd that you don't really run very often. Mm -hmm. As long as it's not the draw, please, for the love of God, stop running the draw. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, but yeah, I'm also going Vikings. I'm glad you men mentioned Case Keenum. He's going to be my point for this. Uh, mm -hmm. This this will be a good game. And the Falcons, like Julio Jones, oh my goodness, went off. But yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah Case Keenum, I watched... 
he was everybody's talking about how he he needs to be that kind of like last minute pickup if you don't really have a decent quarterback right now to just consider picking him up off waivers. Um, someone in our league already had them or had him, and uh, we we played in a matchup this last week, and I painfully watched him rack up point after point. Um, yeah, I don't I don't see any reason why it won't be a repeat. So, mm-hmm. well, yeah. so unanim- I, unanimous. The Falcons unanimous. Won. Unanimous. Yeah, I, kind of a tangent off of the bad programming note. Um, I also think that with some of the garbage that owners are doing with their teams, Mm -hmm. that there should be a system, I don't know, like three years if you make a certain number of just really atrocious decisions in three years, your team should get taken away from you and handed to somebody else. Because we're all tired of watching garbage and some owners are completely okay with producing garbage. Dan Snyder. Or the freak. Yeah, I just. Or apparently the Mara family. <laughs> yeah, I'm exhausted. I yeah. hate, like. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. So. <sighs> moving on. Yeah. This is my garbage game of the week. Or Jed York. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. That's a good garbage segment. game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's my garbage game. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Um, the Niners are playing in Chicago against the Bears. See, the Bears being in this game is what keeps it from being my garbage game of the week because Trubisky's doing okay, that run game's doing okay, that defense is doing okay, and I'm just gonna say Bears and pass the mic on to Paige. I'm also oh, going so. Bears. Um, it looks like Garoppolo is gonna get the start. Um, which might make it interesting. That actually might make it interesting. Yeah. Oh. So, uh, you know, I kind of, like, I kind of have, like, garbage game of the week tie. Um, but Bears are, it's, this is about which team sucks slightly less. <laughs> and I'm going with the Bears. Well, I think the Bears suck quite a bit less than the Niners. Depends on the game. I think it's fair. Well, I think in this case, yeah. Yeah. You're saying was... you're saying this is my opportunity to to move forward in the rank? No, I'm am kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> you know, you too. I mean, if you want to do it, it no, yeah, no, that know. means I would Niners. love to no longer be in last place. That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I will not. I will not be betting on on the garbage. Um, no, the the Bears the Bears are going to be angry. They're coming off of a, a loss from one of the best teams in the league right now. Yeah. So they should have been think... angry all season. Let's be honest. Yeah, nobody That's likes true. a bear. You can just walk up and pet. You like angry bears. You don't go to the they had to, just sitting there messing around. You yeah. to eating they had to get their footing swimming around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if a bear I were eating cooked meat, we'd all be very concerned. I want to know how the bear cooked the meat, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Alex. Go ahead. No, I, I was just saying the Bears needed to get their footing with Trubisky before they kind of f- figured it out for the season. And I think they're in a place now where they can kind of test him more so. Yeah. This will be, be kind of the opportunity for them to say, yes, we can score points like the rest of them. Um, if we go up against a trash team, we will capitalize on that and trounce them. And if they can do that this week, then they're a better team than than we thought earlier in the season. If they can't, then, you know, it kind of, I think this is a telling game for the Bears. But uh, I, I do expect them to win. Yeah. yeah. So where are we at? Should we go halftime or should we... Uh... Let's do one more. Let's do one more and we'll go halftime. Okay. No, let's Did... go halftime now. Halftime? I need a break before do... we talk about oh. the Broncos and Dolphins. Okay, we're going halftime. Let's go. It's, for the, we need a timeout. For, for you Denver Broncos fans, we're taking halftime right now. And for you Dolphins fans too because, yeah. It's true. Okay, it's... Welcome back to the second draft. We're still here. You're still here. We're still drinking. Let's continue. <laughs> we hope you're still drinking. God, we're gonna need to drink a little bit. Let's all take a drink before we talk about this next game. This is this is officially this is my garbage game of the week. My garbage game of the week for sure, hands down. This, this is gonna be bad. So you get somebody else talk while I do this. Okay. Uh, Broncos are playing in Miami against the Dolphins. I'll go first. Oh God. I- it wasn't a beer. It was you talking about this game. <laughs> yeah. We'll move through it quickly. Um, Broncos haven't won a road game all year. <laughs> Denver is playing for draft picks. You know who has won Miami's a road game for... this year? Eli. Eli. We'll get to Eli. 
Um, both teams are floundering. This is an awful game. This is garbage. It's garbage. Um, the I'm going home team. Like in these situations where I just don't know because both teams are playing like absolute garbage, I just go home team. So sure. I'm going Dolphins. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this pick is gonna bite me in the ass. I'm gonna go Broncos just because I don't know. Oh, this is the uh, this is the test for me uh, because the, the split. Um, I this one I'm, I'm I also don't know. Uh, the Broncos have been miserable, and some like masochistic part of me wants to throw my lot in with them. But I I think I'm gonna go Dolphins. Uh, that's really unfortunate to say because the Broncos <laughs> are my team. They're my boys. I'm gonna. I'm going yeah. to go to that game, and despite all of my picks and rooting generally for my picks, uh, I'm gonna go to the game and root for the Broncos. Or not actual game, but obviously I'm not gonna be in Miami. But you're going to attend watching the game in a brewery in uh, on Sunday, and I'm gonna be very sad about what happens and what transpires because I I do think Miami. I mean both. Both defenses aren't as good as they, they once were. God. Um, both offenses are kind of garbage right now. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think I agree with you when you say this is the dumpster fire. It, the 49ers-Bears game is not very great, but this one's pretty no. pretty terrible. It just And it also makes me sad inside, so I'm going to agree with you. This is my dumpster fire also. It's such a weird game, too, because I think Akeem Tlaib is going to be suspended. Yeah, right? he's out. But what a game to be suspended for. I don't even know who's going to be under center for the Dolphins. Is it going to be Cutler, or is it going to be Moore? I don't know. Either situation, if you're going to have your star cornerback out, this is probably the game to do it. I, I, let's just move on. Okay, moving let's on. Just... Um, the Patriots are playing in Buffalo against the Bills. This might actually be a deceptively good game. It could be, yeah. The, yep. The Bills yeah. are surprising. Well, it's also a weird thing. Like, when the Patriots and the Bills play, weird crap happens. Two really I cold weather yeah. teams where everyone drinks a lot. Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> but every time these two teams play, something weird happens. Uh, I'm still going to go Patriots just because you, in this situation, you had to default to the Patriots. Um, Bills, I, I, they won last week. They looked okay. Tyrod Taylor's back. He's playing with a chip on his shoulder. Um, that's all the nice things I had to say about the Bills. Yeah. It's just, it's just going to be the Patriots. I think Tom Brady's going to have another another season-high game, honestly. Because mm-hmm. it's he's... divisional. He's going to come out. He's going to want to shove it down their throats. Gronk is probably going to rough some dudes up. I think Deion Lewis and Burkhead are probably going to have a nice day. Hopefully not too nice because I've got Tom Brady as my quarterback on fantasy and I want him to throw touchdowns. I don't want to see any of that handoff shit in the end zone. I want the opposite. <laughs> well, you can go bleep yourself, sir. <laughs> but uh, it's it's Patriots. It's just gonna be the Patriots. So yeah, that one to ten that one to ten scale that I mentioned earlier or that we've we've been discussing. <clears throat> I think the Bills are at like a six, solid six or seven. Mm-hmm. Pat Pats are at like a nine. Um, they they're just they've been more consistent they've been more solid yeah uh, tom brady just pulls it out when he needs to and just shows everybody why he's tom brady yeah and that patriots defense has really come alive i feel i feel like since the second half of the season started like matt effing patricia yeah, you freaking genius come to arizona and i know i mean i was i was all kinds of excited for some Deion lewis <laughs> touchdowns and I got upset because I kept seeing, like, I kept looking at the the highlights and seeing that Burkhead had put up points. Like, I think he got two touchdowns last week. And I was, like, pissed because I was like, no, Deion Lewis is going to have trash points. And I looked at my thing, and he's he put up more than 100 yards. It was ridiculous. He's He also had a field day. So, I don't know. They, they, they're they solid quarterback, solid receiving core, solid, well, maybe not as quite as solid as their, their running backs, but their backfield is good. Excuse me. Defense looks good. Uh, the, the Patriots are still a formidable team this year. Yeah. I expect them to go into the playoffs and pretty deep into the playoffs. Yeah. If I can talk just a little bit more about the Patriots, what makes them so dynamic is the fact that you don't know what's going to happen with that offense game to game. Like you said, you thought Deion, Deion Lewis. Check. Yeah, you thought Deion Lewis might have had might have had a game and ended up being Burkhead. This week it might be. 
you, you don't know who's going to be. rando from the bench. It might be zero running game and all passing game. It might be zero passing game and all running game. Like, Belichick is such a master of the smoke and mirrors and keeping defenses on their toes to the point where they don't know what's going to happen next. And then he'll F you up because he'll adjust at halftime and change everything up again. It's, yeah. And Tom Brady Just versatility. is like the invincible it's, man. Exactly. I mean, Paige, what did you what did you call the the Patriots at the beginning of the season? It was like Belichick's home for wayward home, boys. Homeward, home for wayward boys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was I loved that because it's so fitting. It's like the best yeah. description of the Patriots that I've that I've heard. They they that's exactly what they are. It's the Belichick can make it happen for whatever the team is. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think they're just a machine. I don't I don't even know if it's if it it's their versatility for sure. But I don't even know if it's like the wild card factor. I just think that they're well oiled. And they can plug in components wherever they need. Exactly, and it's what, a it's a plug in it's a plug and play team. I mean, it's not even one side of the ball; well, it's, it's, it's all three phases of the game. And um, and that com- I mean, Belichick, say whatever you want. People don't like him. I'm also kind of in the camp that's not a big fan. Um, sure. But it's easy to hate the team that kicks the crap out of everybody. Um, but Belichick is a master of the game. The guy, mm-hmm. he's... Um, Understands. Yeah, yeah. And um, he, he's incredible. Yeah. And it doesn't... He adjusts scheme. And part of the reason they're so good is that not only is he capable of doing that, but he has a quarterback who can adjust and yeah. move and change. And, like, it's, it's, they're, constant, they're constantly in flow. That's just they're tr- they they adjust and it's it's and look, yeah look what happened in the Super Bowl last year. I hate mean, watching it as yeah. as a fan of not the Patriots, um, but as a fan of football, it's it's a beautiful thing. It really is. Yeah, I, it's it's all masterful game planning and in scripting because that game plan, that playbook, that scripting is so airtight that you can interchange those players and still make it work because it works so well. Yeah. It's, it's a it's a once in a generation yeah, type of it's why they're comfortable type getting of match. Rid of, yeah, it's why they're comfortable getting rid of, of such incredible talents like Chandler Jones or uh, yeah Chandler Jones or players like that, and still just marching because the the plays are so dynamite, and Belichick runs such a tight ship. We actually saw uh, there was a press conference this week where um, where uh, Gronkowski was asked about the 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 uh, the game the, the touchdown celebrations, and he said uh, I can't talk about that because we get yelled at. <laughs> Because Belichick runs such a tight ship, like he is all effing business, and yeah, no, you're right. We that's, had that's... that in Arizona. I'm kind of tired of the loud, blowhard coach who just screams and yells all the time. It doesn't produce. Whereas Belichick is very soft-spoken and very quiet, but he's like, "Get your asses on that field, effing execute, or you're gone." I don't give a crap. Yeah, like, everyone yeah, is. Do you want to be a part of this is, machine? Is is. is can be gotten rid of. And I feel like everybody loves playing for Belichick at the same time because the man just knows the sport. Like there's no there's no mystery there. There's no weird call outs in the media. Like he never goes out and says, Yeah, this player just effed up and ruined the game for everybody like like BA did yeah. last week. Yeah. It's just we're on to whichever team he's playing next. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, I'm I, I'm already thinking about the next one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and and he can take players who've done little somewhere else and find a way to fit them in and make it work for the team. Yeah. I mean, he he understands what it really is to build a team rather than something around a player. It's not about like building a team around Tom Brady. Right. It's about building a team. Yeah. And Tom Brady can move the same way that Belichick can. And it's exactly. it's it's like they share a mind. Yeah. It's like the Vulcan mind meld shit that's going on in there, and it's it's awesome. I I hate the Patriots, but I love watching them play football. Yeah. So right. we should move on. Moving on, waxing eloquent on the Patriots. I oh hope my you God. enjoyed that double chick. You know you're watching. Never happening again. <laughs> um, you're welcome. <laughs> moving on from talking amazing football to this. Let's save ourselves some time and let's just, it's Browns it's at Chargers. It's Browns at Chargers. 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 Joey freaking Bosa. Mark Ingram too. Yeah. I'm sorry, uh, In Melvin Ingram. Melvin Ingram. Yeah, you've been doing that. I know. Like, Moel. First name. 
They're gonna have Melvin, big games. Melvin Gordon yeah, is gonna game. have a big game, and what? Are you? Melvin Melvin Gordon is who you're talking about. No, I was... Melvin Melvin Ingram. Melvin Ingram. Ingram. On the defense, he's incredible. On the defense. Oh, oh I thought you were talking Melvin about. Melvin Gordon is also going to have yes. an incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Melvin Ingram. I like yeah. And I, Joey Bosa. I wish I honestly wish I had not traded the, the Chargers defense to Page as early as I did because. The last two, like last week, they killed it. Oh. This week, they're just gonna demolish. I know. Yep. And the uh, trade deadline is passed, so there's no way for me to get them back. And that's okay. But, yeah, no, it's it's Chargers. Whatever, all first place in our division. Day. And the Browns are one step closer to that perfect season. Do it, Browns! Let's Do it. it! Let's get it, Cleveland. Bring I mean, home that. I'll make you a trophy. You can bring that trophy home. Philip Rivers uh, had a, I think if I remember right, he had a pretty decent day this past weekend. He he's did. gonna yes, have, he he's gonna have an even better day. They shredded the crap the out of the Cowboys. Yeah, yeah. The past so, even game easier. Was, um, it was electric. It was incredible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's gonna Chargers. go hog wild against them Browns. Yep. By Cleveland. Moving on. This could be an interesting game. Um. Will be an interesting game. Um, Panthers are playing in New Orleans. Interesting the game. This is my game of the Gink week. Of the week. Alex, is this your game of the week? Definitely. Yeah. Oh, this is my game. one of my favorite games of the season. This is the one I've been waiting for. Mm -hmm. I think I might have even mentioned it a few weeks back that like I was looking forward to this matchup because I've had my eyes on the Panthers as a team that's kind of like been escalating. Mm -hmm. Even when they had their kind of mid-season slump, they're kind of they were floundering there for a bit. Um, but the Saints have just been on this like, ooh, and they're coming off a little bit of a, you know, I don't even think it's a little bit. I think it's a huge, huge loss for them. Um, okay. And I, I'm not, I wasn't particularly surprised because it's a good team that they lost to. But uh yeah, it, this game is going to be rough. I'm going to pick the Saints. I'm going to just go. I, I'm. This is my gut feeling. I'm. I'm loving the Saints this year. I'm going to pick the Saints. I think, despite their loss, Kamara had a monster game. I think that the uh, the the Panthers defense has some crazy like Keekly. Like, what are you going to do? But um, you know, once you find the gaps in the Panthers defense, you find them and, yeah. and you can exploit them. Uh, I think last year they played. They played a game where they went into overtime, uh, and then the Saints brought it out with a field goal. And I think we're going to see something very similar this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll go next. Uh, choo choo! I'm still on the Saints hype train. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and just so we can get that up there on the board right there. I'm going to I'm going to say Saints outright uh, for many of the same reasons that uh, that Alex said. A uh, little bit of interesting trivia. Um, Mark Ingram, his contract stipulates that if he's voted an All-Pro this season, then he's automatically named a unrestricted free agent, which means he's going to command a nice asking price, and he's going to be able to shop himself around and make a whole lot of money next season. There's been some rumblings that the Saints are trying to prevent that by limiting the amount of touches he gets every game. That's clearly not working, so what they need to do at this point, if they want to go all the way, go deep in the playoffs, and maybe even get in for a Super Bowl, is just jump right on that mother effing Ingram and Kamara train and just let them go hog wild. But what's also interesting about this game is the fact that if this if the, the Panthers defense sacks the box against both Ingram and Kamara, you've still got a fresh and ready Drew Brees who is still a master at the game. The Saints offense is multifaceted, it's multidimensional, it's incredible. And the Saints defense is still really good too. Hopefully they get Lattimore back. Hopefully Vicaro's gonna be healthy. Everything should be ready to go. If they are, again, I'm taking the Saints because that team is just four-dimensional, whereas the Saints, or I'm sorry, the Panthers are still three-dimensional, but this is again, this is easily my game of the week. We can we can do an entire entirely separate video on just this game along. Oh, and I can just ramble on. I'm sure Alex and Paige could as well, but uh, I'm going to pick the Saints, not just because I'm on the bandwagon, but because I think they're overall a better team. And if they come out swinging and they don't let up, they don't get cute with the play calling, they just shove it down their throats, I feel like the Saints can take this, they can break that divisional tie, and they can march their way into the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, they, they really need to play traditional football, I think. Um, yes. Paige, let's hear your pick before we get into more of the... 
Yeah, yeah I mean, Sean, Sean Payton, I think, is learning his lesson mm. about getting cute. Yes. Um, and I'm a I'm a big Peyton fan. Um, you like to you like body gate? You like that? I, I <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> um, no, I th- I think Sean Payton's a, a very um, talented coach. I think he is too. Um, this is an NFC South like decision game. This is huge. Um, like this the the stakes. I don't. I think this is probably the highest stakes game all week. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And. The Saints already beat Carolina once this year, mm-hmm. um, and Newton's inconsistent. That defense, that Carolina defense, um, is is inconsistent. Um, McCown carved the crap yes. out of the Panthers. That's a good thing. Um, yeah, because McCown is great, but he is no. Drew but Brees. he's no Drew Brees. Drew Brees is. He's Drew Brees. It's a ma- It's going to be a massacre. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know if it's going to be a massacre. No, I mean, be- I think Drew Brees is just going to have a freaking field day. Um, guy plays smart football. Yes. Please, um, please. I hope he does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and I think with it, the, with that epic duo of Ingram and Kamara, they're just going to wear Carolina out. I'm going to throw something out there. MVP, first time ever. Shared award between Ingram and Camara. That would be awesome. Why not? Why not? Yeah, the, I mean the duo, and that you know part of that I think is Sean Payton's brilliance of understanding how to use two yes. guys who play the same position but have different skill sets, mm-hmm. um, and he understands how to use them, and that's huge. Yeah. And I, you know, it's almost like every game, every Saints game is a masterclass. On how to use running backs with differing talents. Yes, I think um, I think just watching them is is a good way to indicate like how the NFL should move forward with the running back position. Yeah. Because if you look at the plays, it's not like I was going to say at the beginning of of this is that in order to win, the Saints need to play like straightforward football. They need to just prove that they're the better team by running. They need to run Mark Ingram power back, and they need to run Kamara outside around the edge. Right. And then they need to let Drew Brees open it up downfield when the opportunity presents itself. That being said, like the reason the Saints have been so successful, I think, in, in the, the backfield is because Kamara has the, the, the wherewithal and the, the kind of know-how to lower his shoulder and smack the, the linebackers when need be. And Ingram can turn an edge when he's outside and hit that high tides and green grass. And yeah. I mean, their okay. their versatility individually is what makes the Saints backfield so dynamic. Exactly. But, and I mean, Kamara gets skinny. I mean, that like he dude, that he finds can, holes. Yeah. Well, and, yeah, you're right. And he's and, and not quite Le'Veon in the sense that Le'Veon will literally wait for stuff to develop in front of him. Yeah. Um, I think Kamara might get there. Um, yeah. But um, but that kid and his legs don't stop. They yeah. just don't. Stop. He's got the he's got the patience and the awareness of Le'Veon Bell. He's got the the power legs of like a Marshawn Lynch. I think we're watching an all time Hall of Fame running back blossom this season. I, I have I no hope doubt. So. Yeah, he's incredible. He's mm-hmm. yeah, I think he's a historic once in a generation talent. Yeah, it's one of those. Yeah, not to slight Mark Ingram either, because Mark Ingram is no, they, but they're him. they're two totally different yeah. running backs, yeah. and that's you know for. For our viewers to watch packed ball football, um, you know this is this has been an argument I've made with ASU. Um, is we have two really dynamic running backs, um, both of which are draft eligible and will be. Well, I mean, they're seniors, so they're leading. Mm-hmm. Um, but we've got Demario Richard, who's like the he's he's the guy who bullies his way through a defensive line. Um, and he gets skinny and he finds holes and he like runs over people like a freaking bowling ball. Um, and then we have Kalen Balazs, who is probably not really well suited to being a running back at all, um, but is pretty good on the outside and he's got pretty good hands. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's when they run him up the metal, it just doesn't work. Yeah. And he's like, he's like six five or something. And Demario's five ten. Like, you put the guys where they fit instead of trying to make them fit your scheme. You yeah. figure out a scheme that works. And Sean Payton's a freaking genius. Yeah. All right. Should we move on? 
Did Alex have something to add? Alex? I don't I think mean, I actually I get, formally I get... said my, my pick. I'm going Saints. Ding, ding. <laughs> right. uh, yeah, I don't know. I could talk about I could talk about the Saints and and the Panthers probably for another twenty minutes, but yeah, that'd be yeah. boring. So let's cruise on. Uh, we can rush through this. Rams, Cardinals. I'm going Rams. Uh, I'm gonna go Rams too. Uh, Rams. Blake Gabbert is not the quarterback of the future. Arizona Cardinals fans, stop kidding yourselves. Stop being those people who see something out of a very, 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 very average quarterback out of one single game and think we found a Messiah. He's Kevin Cobb all over again. He's John Skelton all over again. Let's move the F on. Let's draft the quarterback of the future. Let's let Blaine Gabbard go. I do not want to see this front office become lazy and do another bullshit draft. We pick like a, a lineman defensive in the first round. tackle. And a defensive, like a, like a pass rusher who's got behavioral issues again like we need a quarterback plan for are the you future. referring to come dj i'm referring to a lot of people <laughs> cardinal I, I swear to god i am not bluffing you guys have seen me this year go from being a complete cardinals homer to wearing a saints jersey the last few seasons because i am just done with this team at this, at this point in time if blaine gabbard is the starter in 2018 then i'm just going to take a break from that team i love them to death but I, I can't I can't watch a full season of Blaine Gabbert under center. I just can't do it. Yeah. I, I mean, I text these guys earlier this week um, after B.A. came out and said that he would be comfortable with um, Blaine starting a quarterback next year. Um, if that happens, and I've been watching the Cardinals since I was knee-high to a grasshopper, um, <laughs> I'm done. I'm, I Seriously, I've been through the ringer yeah. with this team. Um, and I'm not saying I'm done forever, but it's an, I'm not even saying a year. I, like, if that happens, I'm taking a break, and it's it could be forever, but I don't know. But I'm over it. I'm so I'm be- over it. I'm become over the it. Un, un, unbiased commentator, you know? Yes, please. And I, that's, I think that's really I, – because I wasn't a homer at the start of the year. Um, yeah, you're a homer forever. But but yeah, it's Cardinals homer. But I but I I mean I, you know you're you're like newer on the football train than sure. I am. Absolutely. Um, I have been through um, the twenty ringer. plus <laughs> almost thirty years of <laughs> Cardinals football. Um, I'm kind of over it, um, especially if the front office doesn't get their shit together. Yeah. Um, and. And if Blaine Gabbert is the route that we decide to take and we don't take a viable quarterback, and I'm not talking like eighth round, I'm talking like viable quarterback, like, like trade, trade up, up the first three top quarterbacks. Trade up to round. get a freaking quarterback. If that doesn't happen and they go Blaine Gabbert, I'm done. And I will commentate all day long and talk about how garbage you are. And Michael Bidwell, I met you in Canton this year and you told me good things were in store and I haven't seen jack shit. <laughs> and I'm pissed. Yeah. I'm done. So, so let's I'm cruise. In the market let's for a new team. Alex, Maybe Alex, you can join the Saints bandwagon. Is, Maybe. Alex, yeah, is Alex picking the Rams? Alex is picking the Rams. You're yeah, the Rams. I, yeah I, I think that's pretty yeah. obvious. Uh, regardless of their weird, weird win over Jacksonville, I, we haven't really touched on that, but I don't even want to. I'm calling it a fluke. That he should have had at fluke. least two passes that should have been intercepted. And he got freaking lucky. Yeah. And they All won right. low percentage success plays, yeah, which I don't understand. Let's move on. Yeah. 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 To another probably not great game. Um, the Giants are playing in Oakland against the Raiders. Fire McAdoo. What are you doing? What is going on? Why are you Get doing this to him. Eli, you jackasses? You, yeah. Bye. It's awful. <laughs> You Two can see on, behind rings. you guys on the chalkboard. Bye bye, Eli. Yeah, no, I think it was was it Steve Smith Senior on Twitter said that McAdoo is running out of people to throw under the bus. Yeah, I don't. I, I swear, like they've got to be so, in some sort of a weird contract situation where letting McAdoo finish up the season is cheaper than than cutting him loose. Like right. ASU now. just paid eleven million dollars to cut Todd Graham. I'm yeah. pretty sure you can cut McAdoo. I, I just don't understand the the functionality of this team. Yeah. <laughs> so Raiders. Giants are done. Raiders. Raiders. I'm also I am on the Raiders train. Um, yeah. Oh god. Oh god, uh, that hurts. Doesn't that hurt? Oh, it's like holy oh, water uh, in your uh, demon. Uh, yeah, demon. <laughs> yeah, it's like holy water. I'm, been, I'm gonna. On, like, she's, a she's I'm gonna person. get exercised. Yes. <laughs> the. <laughs> 
it's it's terrible to say that, but this whole thing, it, it's the same thing that's happening with the Broncos, though. It's like they they Simeon wasn't doing really well. They put in Osweiler, and instead of going to and they've tried other options at this point. Instead of going to their fresh green talent and just trying him and seeing if if their investment that they did in the draft was worth it, they're saying no. Just keep sitting there and watching because. We don't want to put you in yet, and uh, I don't yes. really know. And what I, uh, and they've got they, nothing they to they, they, they're, they're not like, playing what? for anything. It's just so put exactly them in. put them in. Excellent, needs to be playing. Anyway, yes. let's move on. Let's I will talk about well, it. This I other... mean, it's a very similar situation where I feel like Vance Joseph is the problem in Denver, and he's not going to be back next season. We've already established that it's just not going to happen, but oh. it's, it's incredibly poor coaching, like an unprepared coach who just doesn't know what the hell he's doing. It's, I'm not even sure it's that as much as stubborn. Like, how stubborn are you that you see what you're doing is not working and you just continue to do it? Yeah. Just over and over. Yeah. Alright, let's moving on. move on. I think we can breeze through these last two, though, thankfully. I well, think I don't so. know if the, the last Maybe not one the last is not going to be, but yeah. Um, so next up, Eagles and Seahawks. I'll go first. Blair Walsh is going to... Blair Walsh will miss a field goal. That's what he does. Um, the Eagles' offense is dynamic. Welcome to one Sylvania. Um, <laughs> um, the Seahawks' defense without Sherman and Chancellor is done. Eagles. Yeah, who's left in the Legion of Boom? It's, what, Michael Bennett and Earl Thomas? That's it? That's it. Earl Thomas is still in the lead safety. He's incredible. Yeah, Michael guys. Bennett's great, too, but we've already seen, like, it's going to be Russell Wilson who keeps this alive. Any hopes of winning this, this division over the Rams is going to be on Russell Wilson's shoulders, and that makes me worry he's just going to get injured. Yeah. Because he's going to be a target. Because that offensive line is garbage. Any defense, any def- defensive coordinator, any head coach worth their weight in salt knows that Russell Wilson is a guy you shut down. Yep. So I, I feel like they've just painted a target on his back. And I'm probably wrong because he's got such an incredible way of, of, of just scrambling and keeping the play alive and evading like but blitzes and tackles. Those quarterbacks just... wear out pretty fast too. Yeah. You look at Michael Vick; he was on fire for a while, and then uh, I mean, those those quarterbacks have a limited sure. lifespan. But uh, I'm going to go Eagles as well, just because the Eagles are still just incredibly strong. They're like minimal injuries. Wentz is incredible. Run game is incredible. Ajayi, what a great pickup! Yep, Holy brilliant, crap. smart. Yeah, smart. Yeah, I, I I'm also Eagles. I think they if you give them their one to ten scores, I think the Eagles double the Seahawks at, at this point in the season. Easy. I think they're like at an eight. I would put the Seahawks at like a four. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, You're being nice. They're Seahawks. they're just an overall better team. All right, last game of the week. Um, the Steelers are playing in Cincinnati against the Bengals. Uh, Steelers, have a good night, folks. <laughs> this is this is Alex what I'm talking about and what I've been ranting about with the program programming for the the NFL season. Yeah. And I I I believe like they should be able to mix and match later games. Like maybe maybe that's what they need to do is they need to to do the first half of the season and release that to the public and then create the no, that would be terrible. Just that would, that would never work out. It would be skewed. It would be, be fair. Yeah, it wouldn't be fair. Um, It'd be great but for us. Man, it would be. Team. It would be so so great if they could anticipate maybe some of these things. I mean, I know a lot of the the things. Uh, it comes down to injuries, and it comes down to just like breakout players and things like that. And we all know that. Anybody who plays fantasy football knows that. Anybody that does what we do knows that. But. I, I just it bothers me so much that we get these terrible terrible games. Well, I feel like I feel like Thanksgiving was sort of a I feel like that was sort of like pulling back the curtain and revealing what the NFL you know their intentions are with the programming because I feel like those Thanksgiving games on paper should have been great. One game was good. Well, I feel like all three of those games yep. were scheduled because they were going to bring, bring in big ratings. You look at the lineup for the Thanksgiving games, and the only one that ended up being good was with the Lions and the Vikings. Yeah. The other two games on paper should have been great. Why do the Cowboys have to play every year on Thanksgiving? Tradition. I'm over it. The uh, the previous owner of the Cowboys called. It was a whole thing on like halftime. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. A, no, yeah. I know. It's I, I'm over it. Yeah. And so shake it up. You, you're right. You're right. And I I I've been, I know I'm ranting about this, but I this game is better than many that we have seen Monday nights though. 
Like sure. I will say, the, the the if I look back at the rest of the season, this is one of the ones that it's like, ah, oh, you know, I'm still I'm still gonna pick the Steelers. That's gonna be my take. Mm-hmm. Um, the Bengals have shown some kind of resilience to falling into the kind of I don't know back end of the yeah. of the league, and I think they they typically do that. The Bengals they have that kind of I'm never gonna go and be your first round draft pick kind of teams one of those bottom five teams they're they're going to be one of the ones that are kind of in the middle and they've been doing that for for years now you know they're never terrible but they're never good good yeah um i'm also going Steelers, but i actually had a hard time with this only because um that colts game (laughs) (laughs) no because um this matchup is always weird the Steelers and the Bengals matchup is always weird. Um, it's because it's, they, they hate each other. They, always they do. Fighting. They hate each other. It's um, it's Vontez Perfect is inevitably going to lose his mind and try and like f somebody up. Probably um, at least one person. Um, he and that team. It's these two teams together. The Steelers have a weird habit of playing down. Um, and that's you know they haven't their their last several wins have not been blowouts like they should have been. Right. Um, I mean they should have kicked the crap out of the Titans. They yeah. didn't. Um, yeah. And the Bengals have a weird way of having the Steelers number. So I'm picking the Steelers, but I would not be surprised if the Bengals win. Yeah, this is a very it's a clear, weird game. I think it's going to be an interesting game. Yeah. Um, if only because we might actually see some fist fights or, you know, Vontaze trying to murder somebody on the field. Yeah. Um, this is just a prime example of psychological but it's football. That's going to be weird. Like, it, this is totally. going to be entirely psychological football because the teams just have a way of getting inside each other's heads. Yeah. Firing each other up, playing angry, which inevitably, inevitably leads to either incredibly dynamic and fired up football or really sloppy, angry football. Either one is kind of fun to watch. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's like it's yeah. yeah, it's like, hey, I just met you and you're really hot sex or really like angry sex. I just met sex. you and this is crazy. So yes. here's my number. Let's fight later. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, but <laughs> oh, don't applaud, Alex. It was a terrible joke. I think that was the last game. Yeah, that's the last game. Um, Yay, week thirteen. Oh, um, FYI, we are still where we were essentially last week with... Scratch um, last week. Yeah, it's a, it was a scratch, so I'm still ahead. DT's last. Alex is in the middle. So we'll see you guys next week. And hopefully... I'll be in the lead. No, we'll gonna, shake things so up. Fine. Yeah, we'll shake things up. Yeah. No. Thanks for hanging out, guys. I love you guys. Thanks for joining us. See you next week. See you next week. Peace. I got to pee. Same. Everybody's got to pee. Wow. Nah. You guys can't hold your liquor. So I'm just here by myself. Talking to myself. This is like that scene in Wayne's World where Garth is left alone on the set. He doesn't quite know what to do with the cameras on him. <laughs>